Ultrasonic sensors are commonly used with robotics and other applications to detect the distance of various objects. In this uh, video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect the ping, which is the parallax ultrasonic sensor, to the pickaxe. All right. In the with a ultrasonic sensor, there are two different components. You will have the part that will be emitting the sound, the emitter, and this is a high frequency sound that's beyond a person's ability to hear. And we also then have a receiver that will, if there is an object, will reflect that sound back to the ultrasonic sensor. So we have an emitter and we have a receiver. With the ping ultrasonic sensor, there are three different connections. So if we take and say that that is the bottom of our ultrasonic sensor, and we have our three connections, this may be made with a servo cable. And so the colors may vary from uh, device to device, from cable to cable. But let's say this leftmost one is our ground connection. The middle one would be connected to our positive 5 volts. And then this other one would be our signal. This is the one that would get connected back to the microcontroller. Ground obviously would get connected to ground. This is plus 5 volts. That would be connected to just that, plus 5 volts, the signal wire getting connected back to the microcontroller. Now as I said the ultrasonic sensor has two different parts the emitter and the receiver. So in one case we need to have an output. So let's say this is our emitter. We need to be able to initiate that sound so that we could then receive the echo back. So this single wire, single connection on the parallax ping ultrasonic sensor will need to serve dual purpose, both as an output and as an input. So the pickaxe can do that. A single port can be, in most cases, an input or an output. Other microcontrollers you'll need to check and make sure that you can do that. So this would go back to your pickaxe. All right, let's see then how, now that we know how to make the connections, let's see how we would actually program this. All right, for this, I'm going to use a couple of different symbols. And the first one would simply be to store the raw information coming back from the ultrasonic sensor. So I'll simply call it raw DIST. This is going to be used to store the total time for the sound from the time it was emitted to the time it was received back. Now this will need to be a word sized symbol or variable. I'm also going to have a symbol that is going to store my value once I convert it to inches. So I'm going to call that inch distance also word sized. I'm also going to need to do a conversion because what I'm going to get from the uh, pickaxe will be the total time in microseconds. So I will need to convert that into, for my case, into inches. So I'm going to have a conversion factor and we'll simply call it convert and that will need to be actually that could be a byte size value because it's not going to be terribly large so we make that can't make it b0 or b1 because that's being used by w0 we can't use b2 or b3 byte 2 or byte 3 because that's being used by w1 so we can make this byte 4 if we wanted to all right i'm going to go ahead and actually let's um, change that and let's just make that a word size value. So when we go to do math, everything works out very nicely. So let's make that simply word two. I'm going to go ahead and set my conversion factor. 
so that it is equal to so we'll set convert equal to a 74. So how did I get this value? Well, if we know, and this will vary a little bit with temperature and altitude, but if we know that the speed of sound is 1,116.4 feet per second, if I were to multiply that by 12, because I want not feet per second, but I want inches per second, that would then give me 13,396.8 inches per second. So, well, how do I get 74? Well, once we get the number of microseconds, and we're going to be working with all in integers, I would need to multiply it by this value and then I would need to divide it by 1 times 10 to the sixth so that I would be working with equal units. So by being able to divide by 74, that's the equivalent of doing all that math. So once we get the total time in microseconds for half the trip, we'll simply divide by 74. All right, so let's take a look at what the rest of this program would then look like. So we have our uh, symbols and we've initialized our conversion value. So the first thing we need to do is to initiate that sound coming out of the emitter. So we're going to do that using the pulse out command. We need to tell it what pin our ultrasonic signal is connected to. And for the purpose of this, I'm going to use a dot three. Now, ideally, we'd want to be using a symbol name here rather than a specific uh, port name. Uh, the reason for that is it just is more logical and more obvious as to what we're doing, what we're controlling. We also need with the pulse out to specify what kind of pulse we want to send out. And so we're going to be putting out a one. As soon as we send that pulse, we need to start measuring the amount of time. We need to start listening for the echo. So on that very same pin, we need to start listening. So that's going to be the pulse in. And we're going to be listening in on that A.3. And what we're looking for then is that pulse. And we're going to store the amount of time into that symbol called raw distance. So this will now contain a value in microseconds. The problem is, it's not really a problem, but the thing we have to take into account is that this will be holding the time in microseconds, but it's not really the total time. It's in multiples of five microseconds. So whatever we got here, we'd have to multiply by five in order to get to true time in microseconds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's take and use our symbol we have our inch distance. Let's set it equal to the raw distance and we're going to multiply it by five. This is going to give me the total time in microseconds for the trip from the emitter reflecting off the object and back. Now that's both ends of the trip. We're only interested in half of that. So we're going to take our total time, which is inch distance, set it equal to inch distance, and we're going to divide it by two. We're not interested in the total trip, only half of it. So now I have the time in microseconds from the emitter to the, re to the object or from the object to the receiver. Either way, uh, that's going to be what we're interested in. Now we need to do our conversion. So our inch distance is going to be equal to the inch distance divided by that conversion factor. So 
So we're dividing this time in microseconds by 74 because that's what we set it up above. At this point, we've now got a value that corresponds to inches. This is integer value, so it's not going to give us 7.4 inches or 12.6 inches. We could do some additional programming that would allow us to retrieve that fractional amount, but, but what we're getting here is the distance in inches as an integer. All right, so you can see how we can make the connections then to a ping parallax ultrasonic sensor, how we would program it, and then get the value to be returned in inches.